pharmacovigilance re regulations in Japan. My name is Stuart Geary and it's my pleasure to give the lecture on pharmacovigilance regulations in Japan. Turning to legal notices and disclaimer, please note that I am an employee of a Japanese headquartered pharmaceutical company, Azai Company Limited. I have worked in Japan for the last 21 years largely in drug safety and I have a financial interest in that company. Turning to slide number four, the glossary. Some of these terms and abbreviations will be used in the slides that follow. Let me look first in pharmacovigilance regulations in Japan at our outline. We will be looking at the regulatory framework for, reg for ph PV regulations in Japan, then reporting timelines for both expedited reports and periodic reporting during clinical development and post-marketing. We will then turn to post-marketing surveillance studies and risk management plans. And finally, note some other characteristics of Japanese PV and the regulatory system there. So first, let's look at the regulatory framework. Here is a recent timeline for Japanese PV regulations, only over the last about 17 years. This starts with a, the beginning of the EPPV program, which I will describe in more detail later on in this lecture, and on this slide at least ends with the revision of the Pharmaceutical Affairs Law, which changed it from the PAL, Pharmaceutical Affairs Law, to what is now referred to as the PMD, the Pharmaceutical and Medical Devices um, Act. It is a little premature at this time, this is being recorded in July of 2017, but we are likely to have another significant change in Japanese regulations as relates to GPSP, Good Post-Marketing Surveillance Practice, which I will discuss a little bit when we reach that part of this lecture. Let me turn now to structure of laws in Japan. Like any country, laws and regulations have a certain hierarchy in Japan. At the top of this pyramid of hierarchy, we could consider the Constitution of Japan, which has 103 articles. That, of course, is not changed very often. Below that is a, around 1,700 different laws, and these are changed occasionally. It's in this area that the pharmaceutical and medical device law lies, but again, changes in the laws are very infrequent and usually take several years of um, uh, first drafting and negotiation in, in the diet, as well as um, final promulgation. Below that are a larger set of cabinet orders and ministerial or imperial ordinances. This includes things like GCP or GVP or GPSP, and these acts can change on a much high, more frequent basis and can change in some cases quite suddenly. Large regulations such as GCP, GVP, and GPSP will usually be signaled and negotiated with interested parties before they are officially changed, and so right now we are undergoing a process of changing GPSP in Japan. But some smaller details on regulations or some specific interpretations of regulations can change suddenly and be announced really on an, uh, uh, on, on an immediate basis, and uh, it will be expected that industry is compliant with them. Below these laws are guidances and guidelines in Japan. In Japan, the guidelines that relate to pharmaceutical development and pharmacovigilance regulation should be considered not as advice, but really as strictures, that is, things which should be followed under all circumstances unless there is a specific exception which is obtained in advance. <laughs> 